Minecraft is a game of infinite building potential. With the insane number of blocks, textures, and colors, it's no wonder that builders are constantly discovering new tricks and techniques. But it didn't always used to be that way. Before 1.17, there was no deep slate. Before 1.12, no concrete. Before 1.8, no diorite. Hmm, maybe that's not so bad. Before 1.2, no wood types other than oak. And if you go back far enough, you get to a certain update. A funny little release from the ancient year of 2011. Beta 1.7.3. Now I've been thinking about this update a lot recently, as I bet a good amount of you guys have too. This update is peak old school Minecraft, way before my time, an era of the game I never got the chance to experience firsthand. And as I look back on this prehistoric, archaic update that so many people love, I sit here and wonder, how the hell did you people build back then? Like seriously, you have like three blocks. What did you, what did you guys even make? Dirt huts, cobblestone boxes, like this? <laughs> Genuinely like, how? And also, I need to try this. I want to see if I have what it takes to be a good builder in beta Minecraft. I may know a thing or two about building in the present day, but do any of those skills apply to a version that's over 12 years old? Oh, and uh, can I do this in 24 hours? In 24 hours, I've got to learn the ins and outs of beta Minecraft and also make a good build by today's standards. None of that 2012 Minecraft garbage, something I'm actually proud of. And here we are. Wow. <laughs> I will be using a few mods to add quality of life features like an FOV slider and creative mode, which believe it or not, didn't exist in this version. Seriously, I feel like I'm in the stone age, but don't worry cause there's no blocks or gameplay changes from anything beyond 1.7.3. That's some old school Minecraft right there. Whew. I, no, oh, I, there is no F5. <gasps> I can't even talk to you guys. You just have to stare at the back of my head. Now let's see, this of course is a mod, but I can fly, I can fly around like normal. All oh, right, there is no sprint. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so slow. All right, inventory. Okay, full blocks. <laughs> is that every full block in the game? Really? Wait, this this can't be it, right? I mean, I guess you've got the other blocks, whatever that means. This is far render distance, by the way. This is the highest I could set it to. <laughs> That's so rough. All right, first up, gray blocks, right? Like, let's see if we can get a little uh, dark gray to light gray kind of thing going on here, right? Wow, there's really not much to work with here. <laughs> All right, that's our gray gradient, guys. <laughs> Six blocks. I'm not gonna lie, this is terrifying. I think before I dive into this, and I know I'm on the clock here, but I need some help. And you know what? I was right. Not even 30 minutes into beta, things were looking rough. How does anyone build anything with so few blocks? Maybe I'm just spoiled by modern Minecraft, but I could not understand how to make this work. Like, look at this terrain, these blocks, this crazy small build height. Am I really gonna be able to build anything impressive here? In my moment of desperation, I started scouring the internet for advice when I found this fantastic video by Netum. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Not only was this video incredibly cozy and comforting and well edited, but it also gave me some fabulous insight into how I should approach beta Minecraft. And to you, the lovely YouTube viewer watching this video right now, if you want building tips and advice from me and my community, join my Discord. We're always happy to help out and we even run our own build contests. Let me show you my big three takeaways that I got from watching Netum's video. One, limited block choice can be a blessing in disguise. With fewer options, there's less fussing about finding the perfect texture combo. What I realized from this is because there's so few blocks, I can just straight up lay out every single block in the game in one spot and just have them all there to look at. This is gonna be a serious lifesaver, and I'm gonna be building this again wherever I set up my build. Number two, let the terrain inspire you. With limited world height and biome diversity, finding a good piece of terrain that 
really sparks your imagination is key. So yeah, I spent some time roaming around the world really looking for a spot that I really liked and I eventually settled on this. Something about this little flat piece of land right here is just really nice. I've already laid out what I was talking about before with every single block in the game organized by color right here. Just kind of a little staging area where I can get all my block palettes and whatnot set up. I'm feeling quite a bit of potential with this spot guys and I'm excited to work on it. 3. Distance matters. Gradients and detail blocks might not be as clean and diverse as they are in modern Minecraft. Heck, you might even have to detail with full blocks. But from a distance? things just work. I decided I want to go big and make something that looks good from far away. And given that I was just playing around with all the gray blocks earlier, it felt only natural to me to try and make a castle. This castle is going to be big and tall, sitting right in the middle of this nice piece of flat land that we were just talking about earlier. First step of this process is to take down all of these trees though. Okay, that's a nice bit of flat land. Beta still feels super clunky, but by now I'm getting used to the awkward controls. Now I'm gonna start on the castle soon, I promise. But before that, do you remember those sandy slopes from before? I spent a little while turning them into proper cliffs. For my first time terraforming in beta Minecraft, I think it turned out okay. I even threw in some coal blocks towards the bottom just for a little bit of extra block variety. And then came the scary part. Actually putting down some blocks, making an outline, planning the footprint of this huge build. Sometimes when you're faced with a big daunting challenge like this, the best thing you can do is just not think about it. Just clear your mind and put down the first blocks. So that's exactly what I did. And after some ruminating and pondering and thinking and thonking, here we are. I know, I know, no fun time lapse. <laughs> they don't exactly make a replay mod for beta Minecraft. And after all that was laid down, I dove straight into it and started putting down the walls. I'm using lighter colors for the highlights of these walls, the parts that are like bumping out a little bit, you know, the supporting pillars, the towers and whatnot, and a sort of darker, more medium gray, very textured gradient for the back walls. At first, I wasn't really that happy with the colors. I mean, the old textures are so crunchy and weird and all over the place, they don't really look that great. But as I kept going, it really started to grow on me. But oh my god, quick pause. I need to tell you how much of an absolute nightmare building in beta is. Like I'm sure you can imagine, but man is it tedious. Obviously there is no commands or axiom or any of those modern conveniences that we're very spoiled by. But on top of that, there are so many little things that just drive you crazy. Crazy. I keep double tapping space too quickly and just falling out of the sky. I can't clear my inventory with a shift click so I have to do it manually. Slabs and stairs can't be placed upside down so they're a lot less useful. Trap doors have to go against a wall. Th there's no actual wall blocks in the first place or any sort of thin gray block. <sighs> it's rough. It's really rough. I did eventually get a good chunk of this front wall done. Keep in mind that even though the pattern is really similar, I can't copy paste anything. I'm building this over and over and over again by hand, which means this whole thing took like probably four hours, I think. I'm pretty sure four hours. Yeah, I'm already like well over five hours into this Minecraft world. And what do I have to show for it? A little section of wall and some cliffs. Great. <laughs> Just great. Admittedly, I do really like the way this wall and pillar combo is shaping up, but I need a break. So I started working on the pathway leading up to the castle. The front entryway is gonna be a whole other nightmare, but maybe at the very least I can get a little like footpath kind of thing going. That shouldn't be so hard, right? Wrong! This path was all so tedious! <laughs> In case you're wondering why I'm using cobble and mossy cobble, it's because I don't have any options for actual dirt blocks. I can't just use dirt because there's grass everywhere, and because I can't turn off random tick speed, this is all just gonna become more grass eventually. Brown wool is way too brown, and without other brown blocks around, it just doesn't really work. In a lot of modern path designs, there's a kind of center block that goes right in the middle of the path, and that's where like the most foot traffic is, that's where it's the most worn 
on out. And then you have a little bit of texture blending going on between the path and the grass. And normally you're doing that with like moss or mossy cobble or rooted dirt or packed mud. But in beta Minecraft, you're not using any of those. I had to use mossy cobble and green wool. Clearly these two greens are very different. There is really no texture blending going on here. But I tried my best and if you zoom out, if you look at it from really far away, it's not too bad. For this section where the path kind of curves around, I wanted to make some sort of angled staircase, which was a little bit difficult, but I did have, thankfully, a good amount of slabs to work with. I've got the smooth stone and the cobble slabs. I got some levers just to kind of enhance the sort of diagonal sloping feeling we've got here, so this jump of block height was not as intense. And where the path beats the water, I've, of course, got this bridge, which is going across the very shallow uh, pond lake thing, and I gotta say, I'm really happy with this bridge. It doesn't look like much, but think about making a bridge in beta Minecraft, right? And here I'm once again using techniques that weren't a thing back then. Levers to act as diagonal supports from these pillars onto these flat sections. People weren't doing that. Signs on pressure plates to provide a bit of like a, a railing on the side of the bridge. I don't think anyone was doing that either. I don't think this is a thing in modern Minecraft. I think that's a beta exclusive feature. Fast forward like two more hours. I've got a ton more wall and tower done around the back of the castle. I know it's kind of just like the same pattern over and over again, but hey, it's actually pretty nice. I know I'm taking a lot of inspiration from my pink haunted castle, but come on. I've got like three blocks to work with here. Give me a break. One thing that is very different from the haunted castle though is this big circular bit on the side. I bet you've been wondering what this is. I was thinking about a wizard tower, but not just any wizard tower. So far, this whole build has used the same palette. And while it looks nice, I think if I kept going for the entire project, things would get really boring. So I'm taking this opportunity to not only make a cool wizard tower, but something different and unique from the rest of the build. So I'm going with a custom tree. Bet you didn't expect that in beta Minecraft. It's gonna be tough with the limited blocks, especially in the wood department. And because leaves despawn unless they're next to a log block, which is so annoying but I want to give it my all and see how it turns out. As I put this whole wizard tower together, I want to take a moment to reflect on just how weird all this is. Like, think about it for a second. I'm coming back to this ancient version of Minecraft, carrying with me over a decade's worth of accumulated building knowledge and techniques. For example, texturing. People didn't build with gradients back then. People didn't do this whole shading under overhangs thing back then. These are modern innovations that I'm literally taking with me back through time. Same goes for stuff like the levers on this bridge or the use of the green wool in the pathway. Modern techniques retroactively applied to older Minecraft. Anyways, now that we got this tower put together, and man, let me just say, that took a while. Here we are in hour 12, halfway through our project, and uh, yeah, <laughs> this is looking rough. You can probably tell by this point, but I'm not doing an interior. There is just no way I'd be able to get it done in time. But thankfully, no one's going out there and playing beta Minecraft adventure maps, so I think we'll be okay. The next several hours flew by. I put a ton of time into the upper section here, which had basically nothing going on beforehand. This took a couple revisions, which by the way is super annoying to have to tear down and rebuild something block by block. I'm really spoiled by Axiom, aren't I? So yeah, I wanted to throw in some towers here and I know we're getting really close to build height, but this castle needed some more verticality to it. So I just went straight up to the build limit. Up in these heights, you kind of have to fight the clouds as you build as they're there's no way to turn them off, which kind of sucks. I spent hours tinkering with wall shapes, walkway designs, roofs, trying a bunch of different stuff, and eventually I settled on this. It's not finished yet, but I quite like these bits with the roofs. The super slanty verticalness, I think, adds to the dramatic height of the towers and goes with the other towers we built earlier. These details with the pistons are another favorite of mine. Look how cool and versatile this block is. I'm actually so happy with these funny little gray windows. They don't quite fit the vibe of the upper castle levels, but they're so cool, I'm keeping them anyways. So here we are, six whole hours of building later, hour 18. And honestly, even though it's been six hours of fighting beta Minecraft, six hours of placing everything by hand, six hours of annoying mechanics and frustrating lack of block options, I loved it. 
I had a seriously great time. Maybe I'm starting to enjoy this. I spent a bit more time polishing up the tower walls, this connecting bridge between the two sections, adding on a whole second tower here for this cool little underpass, and some other random touch-ups. And before I knew it, it was hour 20. And with only four hours left to go in my challenge, I knew that there was only one project left for me to tackle. And no, it's not the interior. You might remember when I was laying out this build, what seems like forever ago, I put down a bunch of blue wool in this weird rectangle. And no, Oh, I haven't forgotten about it. This big open space is going to be the Castle Gardens. Yep, we're once again switching up the block palette. I'm here to explore everything data building has to offer, and that means working with as many blocks and concepts as possible. This is the home stretch, guys. We're so close. We can do this. This has been a ton of building, and I'm not going to lie, I'm running out of steam. But this garden, this final push to complete the castle, it's got to be great. And Oh man, did I grind for this. I went crazy adding in curved pathways, fountains, lights, manicured lawns, round planter beds, a whole pond. Water is not fun to work with in beta, by the way. Flowers and cacti and trees and lights and everything. I mean, just look at this. Is this the most incredible thing I've ever built? No, absolutely not. But it does kind of actually look decent, you know? For beta Minecraft, we got these ugly textures and like three blocks, like I've been saying. Something about like fountains and these circular walkways just really give me like old school Minecraft server vibes. I don't know if any of you guys have that kind of same experience, same feeling. Let me know down in the comments if you do, but something like this just really reminds me of playing on old Minecraft servers way back in the day. I tried my best at a custom tree. You know I love the leaning spruce trees, and this one is fine. Once again, I can't place too many leaves away from the wood blocks. They're also going to despawn, which is ridiculously annoying, by the way. We got this cute little lawn space in the front, right outside the back entranceway of the castle. And uh, yeah, we got, you know, these cute little benches, and maybe we're having a picnic with some cake or something like that. Big fan of the shape of these pathways, by the way. I wanted to make something curvy and slopey, and I think it turned out quite quite nice and you really don't even notice these little bits of detail. I think the iron ore is quite nice, but you know, it's little stuff that you only see when you're up close. And you know what guys? That final push, that ultimate grind through the last few hours, it was 1000% worth it. I mean, just look at this. We've come so far. We've fought against the old clunky beta Minecraft controls. We've learned to not only tolerate, but fully explore limited block palettes. We've adapted to a game without commands, without Axiom, without the quality of life that we expect from modern Minecraft. Here we are, 23 hours into a crazy project, and I'll admit, I was a bit scared to take on this challenge. I didn't think I was going to have enough time or creativity to really make a good build. I was so afraid of messing up and not having the patience to tear it all down and start over again. But really, now that I think about it, that's what building is all about. Even if it seems like the creators you see online just pump out incredible build after incredible build, that's not how it is. Trust me. At its core, building in Minecraft, as with any other art form, is about trial and error. Learning by repetition. Learning by making something and then changing it. And while all our mods and tools certainly make things faster, in some ways they take away from the genuine experience, the essence of what Minecraft as an art form is. Am I gonna ditch Lightbatica and Axiom forever? Probably not. But I really do think that taking on this 24 hours in beta challenge changed my perspective, changed my outlook on what I do here on this YouTube channel. And with that being said, before we can call this project complete, there is just one more thing I'd like to do. I'd like to talk to someone. Your video inspired me quite a bit to really give this whole beta Minecraft thing a try. I think it would be cool to show you uh, what I've been working on. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Whoa! Yo! <laughs> this is so cool! <laughs> Thank you! What? Thank you so much! Did you- did you do- did you do the backside? I- I did do the backside, yes. Good, um, good. Interior, I'm glad you didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the, the- the- the levers on the thing, that is so cool. You know, it's just a bridge, right? We've got very limited building materials, but I really wanted to make something using all these kind of like, you know, levers and signs yeah, and yeah. these like, sign on a pressure plate is not something you can do in modern Minecraft, uh, actually. I- wait. 
Read what? I can even step on the pressure plate and the sign Whoa. just stays there. <laughs> that is <laughs> all right. The very first thing I work on is this cliff side here before I even start anything on the castle. Like it looks like a modern player playing beta is what I'm trying to say. Like... I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, that's that's essentially what it, what it was, right? Like, people yeah. weren't doing this kind of terraforming back in beta Minecraft, you know, with the, the dirt overhangs and this kind yeah, of, like, yeah. dirt into stone thing. As you probably know, um, leaf blocks, they disappear even if you place them. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, it makes building with, you know, bushes or foliage so much more difficult, right? You have to have wood blocks. Going over to kind of the wall of the castle here, right? We've got yeah, the wood. Yeah. I think this is so cool. Like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> I, I've been playing beta for like a year now. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done this. Such a huge build. Yeah, listen, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The thing is, of course, beta 1.7.3 players are not using 5 million iron blocks because yeah. they're playing in survival mode. You know, we're being yeah, a little true. cheaty here. <laughs> they're definitely not building with bedrock. <laughs> yeah, wait, I didn't even see that. It's oh part my of God. the shading. Here's yet Whoa. another technique. I like the, the trunk of the tree. It's really cool. It's weird with so few blocks, you know? People nowadays are spoiled with their upside down yeah. slabs yeah. and their fences and the fact <laughs> that they can put leaves down without them disappearing is yes. like a big thing, you know? Oh, the, the view on that is just, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm quite proud of this view. Yeah, listen, I'm standing here for a reason because I, I walked around here and I realized that this is a good shot. So yes. <laughs> have to show it off. Have to show it off. Yeah. Have you worked at all with water in beta Minecraft? Not really. Like... Okay, keep keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> it's really not fun. You come down here, it's so dark. It's just like the abyssal pits of hell down here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh we are God. literally like I think three blocks deep and it is like I am in the bottom of an ocean here. Even even if you put in glowstone. Oh my god, it just No. No. <laughs> Tower on the left here actually goes up to build height. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't yeah. Uh, you can see like my my view yeah, is yeah, all yeah, faded yeah. out here and if I try I can't place anything. I think you can place torches. I think. Oh, can Maybe. I? Ooh, well, that's a Maybe. you know, I didn't try that. Oh my god, you're right. You know what? You learn something new every day. That's very <laughs> cool. 24 hours later, you know, it's it's all been yeah. one block at a time. No world edit, no axiom, no copy pasting. But I really appreciate you, you know, through that video giving me a lot of the inspiration I needed to actually make this. So, you know, thank you, man. Yeah, no worries, dude. <laughs> We finished the castle, we've shown it off to Netum, and most importantly, we've got their seal of approval. I think that means we can finally call this build done. And man, what an adventure it has been. From taking my first steps in beta Minecraft, afraid to even put down a single block, now here we are, almost 24 hours later, having built this entire thing, shown it off to the person that's inspired me to start this build in the first place. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like down below, and if you're not subscribed, consider doing that as well. It really does help me out a lot. And until next time, guys, this has been Leon, and I'll see you all in the next Minecraft video.